Okay. So this is the uh, a new addition to our slide deck as well, where we will have any type candidate and announcements. So if you are running for a position um, and you're not slated to speak on this program, now is the time for you to come to the mic and address the audience in a quick, quick uh, three to five minute spiel of anything that you want them to know. Okay? Make sure you tell them who you are and what position you're running for. Any candidates want to speak? The mic is up. It don't matter, either one you want. Good morning, good morning. It's great to see such a good group of Dems. Uh, let's see, Jamil hit, I'm supposed to say who I am. I'm Francie Cleckley. I'm running against Billy Garrett for Senate District 10. Somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> okay, so Jamil hit the debate watch party this Tuesday evening. Please come by, spend some time. I know 9 o'clock is late, but uh, we could have some fun, and hopefully this will be a very energizing debate. Also, next Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to do the ribbon cutting on the new headquarters office. Please join us for there. We will head to the Uptown Fall Festival event um, and have a little bit of voter engagement. <clears throat> And then one last thing, we have got to kind of up the ante on volunteers for each of our campaigns. Um, I am now hosting a call every Thursday night to talk about volunteer opportunities, whether it's putting out yard signs or whether it is making phone calls, knocking doors staffing some office hours, writing postcards, there's something everyone can do. So either please see me or go on my website and fill out your volunteer interest and then we'll talk to you on Thursday nights. Anyway, thanks so much for your time today and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good morning, I'm Ken Robinson. I'm running for District 4 County Council. Good morning. morning. Well, I want everyone to vote for me who can, but I just want to tell you, I'm fired up and ready to go. Well, and I'll tell you why. I was able to volunteer for the Democratic National Convention this year. And I'm one of them fellows that ask God for favor. So I was in the transportation, transportation pool, about 100 people there, and went to the fellow and said, I want to drive. Went to the stack. My name was the last name at the bottom of the stack. Anthony signed off on it, and a lady there said, well, you're cheating. You're going from the bottom to the top. I said, ma'am, that's favor. <laughs> so me and this other lady were co-drivers. Guess who we got to drive for? Maxine Waters. That's right. A little old country boy from Forest City, North Carolina. Greenwood, South, really from Doris Grove, so that's our country I am. But I just want to tell you this, is that I found out something. While I was there, you really had to be there, and he can expound on this. I got to go in one night, that's the night that the Obama spoke, but in the lobby out there, you meet some interesting people. Now, I suggested to Ms. Waters, and she listened to me. I said, the, the Republicans came up with something that was fantastic, DEI. Listen to me, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's the Democratic Party. Think about it for a moment. We're diverse, we're equal, and we include everyone. That's us. They use it to exclude people. That's including everybody. And to see, it was like Jesse Jackson was saying, it's just like a rainbow up there. All kinds of different people. And then you see the pillar guy talking up there too. He came to it. I don't know if you saw the little fellow named Noah, about 20 years old, he sent him in his place. I'm just telling you this, it's just so exciting to see people and the excitement that you have is just contagious. 
It really, really is, and, and uh, it was a joy. If you ever get a chance, go to one. Go to one. Go to a Democratic one. <laughs> because we include everyone. And we have, one last thing. My Republican friends, and I got some, some of them, some of them are Trump. I got a sister that has a Trump key tag, and she's 90 years old. One thing that the Democrats allow you to do that the Republicans don't, the Democrats allow you to think. The Republicans, you cannot think. You must walk in footstep with everyone else. And that's what makes us so unique. Now, I was telling at the table, one thing that I'm going to do in my district and in, even in Greenwood is that make a concerted effort to go after the Hispanic market. I don't know how many are here. I mean, we've asked. That's a growing population. And I was saying that sometimes, this is just honest, that sometimes people think they're better than them. Sometimes people of color think we're better than them. Let's just be honest about it. But we aren't. They vote. And they work. They aren't all illegal. They aren't coming here illegally, a lot of them is. And those that do work harder than those that are here illegal. That's in my opinion. But anyway, listen, I didn't come here to preach. I'm about three minutes up, just about. <laughs> but it's just a joy just to run for office and to meet the interesting people. And one thing that I said that, you know, I think that in my race, I'm not sort of counted. In other words, uh, I think that my candidate thinks they have to just to show up. Because in my district, it's 90% Republican and 90% Caucasian. But, I'm a, I, but I will say this. People tend to gravitate toward people they're familiar with. Now, I'm not that famous, but a lot of people know me just seeing me. One question I said, now, who am I? Who is the, the, the Republican candidate for District 4 County Council? Who is it? Who's my opponent? Nobody knows. And I'm just about forgetting the name. Her last name is Lee. Her husband is the, uh, the fellow who's a judge. But nobody knows who she is. If she walked through that door, I wouldn't know her. So if you're a candidate, become familiar with people. Let them see who you are. Now, I have a crazy little thing over there. And I'm going to say, now, I got a picture of me from 1977 and one from 2024. The only difference is the afro. <laughs> but on the back, on the front, I have it written in English. On the back, it's written in Spanish. So that's a market that we can get because no one's going after. But vote, tell everybody to vote, and they will vote. Some will, some won't, so what next time? So listen, it's great being here, and you can tell I can talk more than I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's just great to see you all here. This is just growing. And this, I'll say, this is the first time where I see faces because people say, well, kid, I was there, and I didn't recognize you were there. But it's good to see you. My, F. Lee Bailey, it, it, it's good to see Ross Wise here. He's my favorite, uh, favorite lawyer. <laughs> but listen, thank you so much. And uh, let's take this election by storm and put Don Trump where he's supposed to be, wherever that is. <laughs> thank you. Good job. Good job. He, he can't behave. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good. My name is Annette Edwards. I am a candidate for Ward 3 uh, for the next city council member of the board. Uh, the reason I'm running for Ward 3 is because I'm a lifetime member in Ward 3 for over 40 years. Uh, I have a passion. I'm dedicated and committed to the public service. I believe in unity, community engagement, uh, holding people accountable for positions they hold, uh, be engaged in my community, not when we wait till someone dies, Senator Nicholson, but we can get, be engaged in our community when we see stuff is going on and we can get involved and our voice be heard. Hey, I'll be your girl, Annette Edwards for Ward 3. Put the word out. Right. Anyone else? I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs>